What's up, savages? How would you like to make a low poly tombstone and then engrave it? And check this out. You can take it to the next level and add this uh, stone texture in there as well. All right, so let's get started. All right, so first, what you want to do is uh, perform a Google search for tombstones and see what they look like. All right, so the Google image search. There's tombstone shapes, a cross, coffin shape, uh, dome shape. I don't know, whatever you want to call that shape. This one's a little boring, too easy to make. Uh, you can pretty much make all of these with the cube. And look at the font and the text. Usually it's something similar to Times New Roman. Uh, sometimes it's aerial font, but it tends to be Times New Roman. All right. That looks uh, Times New Roman. Uh, serif. I don't know what this one is. It looks cool. So let's get started. All right. So let's pick a shape. Let's go with uh, two complex, not low poly enough. Not low poly enough. Well, I guess we can do something like that. Let's try that. Make a few of them. All right, so I'm gonna scale this down along the Y axis, S, Y, and move the mouse inward. There you go. Maybe make a little wider, you know, whatever thickness you wanna go with. One from front view, S, X. There we go. I'm just freehanding it. And now I'm gonna add some uh, loop cuts for that. Uh, add a base with a different uh, cube tab key and control R, move the mouse up here, spin the wheel, or you can hit the plus or minus sign on the number pad. And it's gonna just freehand the uh, geometry here. All right, so five, five cuts, enter, enter. There we go, Shift Z for wireframe. I'm gonna drag select these uh, center ones right here, top center. G, Z, pull it up a bit. There we go. And then, so it kinda goes down right there, so I'll pull these down here, drag select, Drag select GZ, pull it down a bit, just like that. Cool, that looks good. That looks similar to that. And I'll bring in another cube here in edit mode, and I'll make it the base that we have down here. Shift A, cube, three for right view, GZ, and have it penetrated just a little bit. SY, make it a little wider, and then drag select the bottom, GZ, pull it up. Let's see, all right, I'm gonna hit the, hover the mouse over this bottom corner here of the bottom cube, hit the L key, L for Larry, and that'll select this whole section there, there we go. Now just make it wider, SX, and whatever, just freehanding it, whatever looks good, that looks good. And I'm not gonna make those vase, those are not low poly. Let's see, Shift Z for solid view. Cool, tab key, that's looking good right there. All right, and then uh, for the text, I'm gonna use a text tool. So I'm back in object mode, shift A, and use text right here, text. Well, it's not called the text tool, it's just called text. And we got brought it in, it's right here. It's looking up, it's a little flat, so I'm gonna stand it up. RX90, enter, there we go, I stood it up. One for front view, shift Z for wireframe. Now I'm gonna take it to edit mode, I'm gonna type in my text in their tab. Backspace, let's see, John, oh, it's already caps lock. So you wanna make them all uppercase, it's usually in uh, tombstones, if you look at the text, usually it's uppercase text, the whole thing. Let's see, John, enter, crease. There we go. And control A, select all. And I'm gonna go right here to text, text data. And you see I got a line there right here. So right now it's aligned towards the left. I'm gonna center it, so it looks neater. There we go, now it's centered the line. I'll look, even put it there in the center of my uh, my tombstone there, tab key for object mode. Looks pretty big, so I'm gonna scale it down a bit. S for scale, bring it down. GZ, bring it up. S for scale a little bit more. Cool, all right. So there it is, it's inside of my text. Sorry, that my text is inside of my tombstone. I uh, hit three for right view. Looking at it from the right view, it's right there. I'm gonna pull it out in front a bit, GY. Just freehanding it right there. Now I'm gonna make this sticker, I'm gonna extrude it. So same thing right here in text data. I'm gonna open geometry right here. And then extrude, I'm just gonna hold down the left mouse button left mouse button in there and drag it out until I get it wide enough that it penetrates in there. Um, that looks good. Let me hit GY, bring it in a little bit more. So as much as uh, you want to dig in there, shift Z for solid viewport shader. All right, it's looking good. It's not a times new Roman. Uh, if you like, you can leave it like that. But if you want to change the font, go over here, object data again in the properties panel, open this font menu. And then right here for regular, you're going to click on the folder right here. And then here's all your fonts that you can use. 
it doesn't give you an example of what they look like, a little preview, but if you know what, uh, what to look for, you can use the search engine here. So I'm going to type in times. There it is. And this one right here looks like times bold. So I'm going to select this one here, times New Roman, double click it in. And there it is. Now it's times New Roman. Looking good. Penetrating my mesh. All right, cool. So I want to cut this into there. So what I got to do first is convert this into a mesh. So right now my text is not mesh, it's text. See here's a symbol for curves. It's uh, more like a curve right now. I needed it to be text. So I'm going to right click it and there's convert to mesh right there. Cool, so now it's mesh. Now the symbol's mesh and I lost that the text menu there, text data menu, now it's mesh. So once you're done modifying your text, then I would convert it over to mesh. All right, so I'm gonna use a Boolean, Boolean modifier to cut it into there, cut it into the tombstone. So I'm gonna select the tombstone and then I'm gonna go over here to modifier, add modifier, select Boolean. There we go, it's Halloween. Then for object, it's gonna be my text right there, bam. All right, difference. Yeah, I wanted to cut the difference out. And then I'm going to click on this arrow here, select apply, go apply it. Cool. So now I can delete the text here or just pull it out to see. GY, make sure it's successful. Cool. Cut right through there. X key delete. And there we go. Got a nice cut in there. Looks in smooth. Uh, I'm going to select it, go over here to materials, and make it look kind of gray. Just bring down the value here. Oh, let me go over to here to the render viewport shader. This one right here, the bubble. There we go. It's in the dark. Let me bring the light here in the front. GY, pull it up a bit. There we go. If you like this color for your, tomb, for your tombstone, you can leave it as is. If you want to get that grainy appearance, that grainy look, you're going to use the shader nodes. So for graininess, I'm going to select my tombstone. I'm going to click on shading right here. All right, already got a material there applied. Let me also switch this one to the render viewport shader. Z for zebra. Select rendered. Same thing as clicking right there. All right, let me bring this up. I got that selected, so here's my shaders for um, my tombstone there. So principal BSCF, material output. Now I'm going to bring in uh, a bump, a bump map, shift A. So bring up the item menu search, type in bump. There you go, bump, right here, bump, and drop it right there. And this one here, normal, I'm going to connect it to normal right over there. There we go. All right, so nothing yet. What I want to add is noise. So noise for randomness, shift A, search, noise, noise texture right here, noise texture. Drop that in there. And uh, normal maps. We got that connected. So I'm going to connect the color here to the height. And watch this magic here. Loading, loading, loading. Oh, cool. See, you already got something there. Looking uh, like stone. If you don't like that look, you can play around with the scale right here. And bring it up. We'll bring it down. You can try to make marble. And it's going off this color right here too. Subsurface. Let's see. I'll leave that alone. So for other colors, you'd have to bring in, um, what you call it, a uh, mix shader. And you can try two different colors. But I'll leave it like that. All right. And if I want more control, I can bring in uh, map, mapping. Let's see if they're mapping, the mapping shader, connect vector to vector there. And then you got to bring in the texture mapping. So whenever you use one of these mapping uh, shaders here, typically you would also use it with texture mapping. Sorry, texture coordinate, texture coordinate. There we go. And this for my object here. So object to vector right there. And then I can use the parameters here, give me more control. See, it already looks different. Uh, let's try generate to see how that looks. Generate it to vector. Yeah, it looks about the same. All right, so I got another object there, so I'll just leave it as generated since I'm not using another object there to play around with it. Uh, I can use object and then bring in something in here like an empty and then manipulate it that way. All right, so for detail, I'm going to bring it way up. And for scale, bring it up some more too. So I'll get those big giant chunks there. There we go. Distortion, distort a lot more. There we go. Strength all the way up. Cool. Distance, I think one is good. Bring that back to one. There we go. And you can play around with these. Yeah, you won't really notice it much. 
because it's small. Let me go over here to layout. And there we go. See, it looks rainy there. See over camera view. Cool. Uh, let's make another tombstone. So you can go ahead and uh, make other tombstones based on tombstone designs. See what other designs you like. Uh, this cool silhouette here is cool. Uh, you can get as creative as you want, but if you're making low poly tombstones, I guess you wouldn't go overboard and try to make these round ones over here. All right, so we'll just add a floor here. I apply the same material to all of them. One for front view, G for grab, S for scale. Just gonna make a humongous floor here. Give it a greenish color. New, new. Just gonna call it grass. Like a nice pastel green color. There we go. That's cool. All right. If you don't want your floor looking flat, what you can do is uh, take it to edit mode, subdivide it a few times, subdivide. Use the subdivide menu down here. Let me try um, 80 cuts. Not too bad. Let's go with 100. On your computer, it might, it might not be able to support 100 cuts in the, uh, in the menu there. Tab key. All right. Now I'm going to go over here to add modifier, add modifier, and select displace. So this is to give my uh, my floor here some texture so it doesn't look so flat. Shoots up in the sky. That's okay. Bring the strength down right here to 0.1. There we go. And then click on this icon right here, the properties panel icon, but it's down here next to new. And it takes you down to texture. Click on new. And you can use these different textures here to uh, displace your mesh there, your floor. I'm going to select Musgrave. There we go. Musgrave, looking like a grave. Uh, strength is kind of strong, so I'm going to go back over here to Modifier and try to reduce the strength down and try 0.05. That looks cool. I'm okay with that. Got a little bit of mounds there. All right, and just select your tombstones. So I'll bring this tombstone up right here. Oops. GZ, GX, put it over here somewhere. Cool. Make a duplicate of that one there. Shift D, and then Shift Z. So when I move it, oh, Shift D, then Shift, oh, not that one. Did I make a duplicate? Yep, let's delete that. Select this one here, Shift D, and then Shift Z. So when I move it, it doesn't go up and down the Z axis. There we go. Touching the floor there. Cool, let's penetrate the floor a little bit. Uh, in retrospect, maybe these with names. I should have made a duplicate first and then uh, put the name on one of them and leave the duplicate there so I can use it for uh, for other tombstones and put different names on it. Shifty, let's put one there. Trying to just scatter them. Typically in a cemetery, they would be um, lined up. GZ. And just to rearrange them here onto your scene. All right, so after you're done setting up your scene there, I guess I'll add a few more of these. Shift BX. Uh, choose a good view for your camera, kind of like this view right here. Control alternate zero. Zoom into that. Not bad, not bad. All right. Uh, this doesn't look too cool, right? So if I render this out, it looks kind of boring. Let's add some fog to it, you know, let's make it a, a little spooky. So these are what I got so far. All right, let me go back over here to Blender and uh, let's make it foggy in there. So select the World tab right here, the Properties panel. Uh, you're gonna wanna open Volume. To the right of Volume, click right here on None and then select uh, Volume Scatter. There we go, it's gonna make it foggy. Uh, it's very dense, so you gotta decrease the density really low. So let's try 0 0.05. And there we go, I see some fog there already. Let's try 0 0.01. There you go. Looks a little more foggy there. Uh, let's play around with the light settings. 
try to bring up the density again, and I'll just make the light brighter. So let's try density at a 0 0.05. Again, select the light here. And have data, increase uh, the power to 5,000. There we go. See now it looks a lot more foggier. Let me try brighter, 7,000. There we go. Cool. So I got that going on. Ooh. All right. So I got these shadows right there. They're kind of not really working as they should. See, it'll appear there in your render. Here's render here, foggy. I'll go back over here, light selected. Open the shadows menu. Don't deactivate it. You want to have shadows. Uh, activate contact shadows. Open that up and increase the distance here. There we go. So now I got the shadows there. So here in the render, looks cool. Kind of can't see what's going on over there. So maybe I'll move the light back a little bit. G, Shift Z. Oh, didn't like that. Let's see, G, X, move it over to the left. Is that looking better? Undo. I think I'll just create a duplicate and I'll put it back there to make it a little weaker. So the light selected, set for top view, Shift D. A light over here, zero, GZ, bring that light down, the duplicate, there we go, and now I got more light over there, let's see GX, move it over, I guess I could leave it like that, that same strength look, looking good right there, cool, uh, these are in the shadows, that's alright, if I want to lighten them up, I can uh, always bring a light in front of them, shift D, zero, uh, Obviously, this one also makes shadows, but I can turn off the shadows on it just so I can just get, get it to light these up. Bring the strength down on the duplicate there. There we go. Maybe bring it down some more. And let's try 500. Actually, try 700. GX. Move it over a bit so you can still see some of the grain there in those. GY. Cool. All right, I'm liking that. If you don't like your floor, so you can see the squares there. You can right click it and smooth it. There you go, it looks a little smoother. Uh, if you like, you can also, let me go back to shade flat. You can triangulate it if you want more of a low poly look. Uh, take it to edit mode. Make sure everything's selected. You hit the A key to select all, then Control T. It'll triangulate your faces. Tab key back to object mode. Now a little more triangular, but if you don't like those uh, square faces there, you can just smooth it out. F total to render, and you'll be done. I'm gonna wait this, for this to process. Get rid of those contact shadows there. Sorry, these are not contact shadows. Contact shadows will be something over here, like these uh, extra shadows that, that we have. Uh, but there you go. I don't like that floor. It looks a little glossy, so I'm going to change that as well. I'm going to click on my floor here. We do some specular. There we go. And then that this is what I'll prefer. If there's done rendering, I'll get a uh, floor here that doesn't have that on it. So there it is. I don't have that specular coming off the floor, looking good. I got that light source there, some of the blur from that other one. I'm going to leave it there. Kind of looks like there might be a ghost there, but if you don't like them, you can just move the lights further away. But you can see them thanks to the fog there, due to the volume scattering. But uh, thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.